Hello everyone, uh, with this episode I'm going to start a new chapter where we're going to talk about claims problem uh, and division rules. Uh, so what is the motivation of those problems? Well, this is an application of uh, cooperative uh, game theory. Um, well, imagine that you and I uh, make some investment and form a, a business partnership, all right? So you invest some money, I invest some money. We put, we, we both put uh, some effort and then this business flourish for some time. So everything goes very nicely and smoothly. And after a while, let's suppose, um, um, th th there is some economic uh, negative shock and you know, the business doesn't go well, and then we have to declare bankruptcy. So what we do, we sell, we liquidate the firm. Uh, basically, we sell all our assets and pay our debts, and then we look at the remaining money, uh, whatever that is. So let's suppose this is some positive amount. And then uh, we, we need to split this uh, because all the debts are already paid, so the remaining positive surplus is ours, you and I. Well, then the question is, uh, how are we going to split this? Well, clearly, you are going to have some certain claim. I will have a certain claim. Uh, let's suppose uh, the remaining uh, amount of money is uh, $100,000, all right? And um, I claim that I, I own uh, $80,000 of this money because uh, of the initial investment I made and the time and the effort I put for this uh, company, etc. Uh, well, probably uh, you will also claim something uh, as high as I did, assuming that you also did contribute um, equally or you know almost equally. So let's suppose uh, you also claim seventy thousand dollars of this money. Well, the problem here is, you know, my claim eighty thousand, your claim seventy thousand. Well, clearly. Our claim, the total claim, exceeds the amount of money we're supposed to split, which is hundred thousand dollars, right? Well, if it was, I mean, if the world was such that I claim, uh, say, eighty thousand dollars, but you claim only twenty thousand dollars, well, we don't really need to negotiate anything, right? Because you know, I just get my claim, you just get your claim, and then uh, that's it. We dissolve the partnership. However, or alternatively, if my claim is, say, $50,000, your claim is $20,000, so the total claim is $70,000, which is less than uh, what we're supposed to split, well, clearly, we just, you know, uh, you know I mean, I, I, I mean the, the problem is not really interesting. So the interesting problem, or the problem gets interesting when our total claims exceeds the amount of surplus we're supposed to uh, split. So that's basically uh, you know, what we do uh, in the claims problem. We first formalize this problem and then sort of look at how we solve uh, or sort of approach to solve those problems. Well, a very important assumption in all our analysis here is that we assume that, well, I mean, where are those claims coming from? I mean, can you, for example, prove those claims in court? Um, or is it just some random declaration? So, I mean, is there any strategic uh, part of making a claim? So these are very important questions. And in reality, uh, in, in many situations, the claims are, are just, you know, words uh, that you probably cannot prove in the court. And, 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 or, and or there might be some strategic uh, reasoning behind, you know, how much to claim. And, and, and so what we're going to do in all our analysis is to ignore all that. What does that mean? That means, let's suppose my claim is my honest, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of money that I honestly think I, I, um, I'm supposed to pay. All right, there's no strategic uh, thinking. Uh, and or consider problems where, um, you know, I can prove that that's my claim, all right? Um, one very good example for this, uh, you know, everybody uh, deposits money to bank in their saving accounts, right? So imagine a very simple scenario where you and I deposit some money to a bank that we both uh, sort of cooperatively created. And so uh, let's suppose I deposited uh, $80,000, you deposited 
you know, $70,000. So with that money, uh, with this bank, uh, we do some business. And unfortunately, things go uh, 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 bad. And then, uh, the, as I said, we bankrupt or the bank bankrupts. And so uh, we liquidate all the assets and the remaining amount of money uh, that we have is $100,000. Well, the question is, clearly, this is much less than uh, our total uh, deposit. So, uh, and I can prove how much money I deposit. You see what I mean? So, that's very, very important whether those claims uh, can be verified or not, whether there's strategic uh, sort of game playing going on between the players when they announce their claim. So, we ignore all that. So, we suppose and assume which is a very strong assumption, I know. But let's go in baby steps. Uh, so let's analyze this problem first. Uh, so we assume that when the players make their claims, there is no strategic concern, all right? Um, and all the information are common knowledge, public information, all right? So how do we model this problem? Uh, well, as I said, all, sometimes we call these problems as bankruptcy problem. Uh, but, you know, in the formal lingo, we call them claims problem. So here's how we are going to model it. So we call E as sort of the surplus, all right? So there is some surplus E, which is non-negative, uh, that is going to be divided among uh, N agents, all right? Obviously, this should be more than or equal to 2, all right? Well, for every agent... Uh, and by the way, the capital N, I will use the same notation for the set of agents and also the number of agents, okay? So whenever I say for every I in N, here I'm using it as a set. Um, somewhere else, for example, here, I'm going to be using it as the number of players in that set or the number of agents in that set. Um, the agents also be called as creditors, all right? Um, for every agent or creditor, uh, CI, um, which is the claim of agent I, is a non-negative number, all right? So each agent has a claim. Well, obviously, this claim uh, should be non-negative, all right? And, uh, well, for some agents, it could be positive. For some agents, it could be zero. That's, that's perfectly fine. But it's not, I mean, we, we're not allowed to use a negative claim, all right? Well, then when we bring all those agents' claims together, we form claim vector, all right? Um, so we denote it by C. So whenever I drop the subscript I, we basically mean um, a vector. All right, so our first and the most important definition, a claims problem is a pair, C and E, all right? C is the claim vector and E is the amount of money or amount of surplus that's going to be divided among those n agents. So this vector comes from uh, this uh, space. So C, remember, is an n-dimensional vector, non-negative vector. And E, the surplus, is, remember, a one-dimensional positive number, a non-negative number. Well, here the important thing is that the total of the uh, claims exceeds the surplus E or equal, but it will never be less. Well, the question is why this scenario is not interesting, summation CI. Well, I mean, as I said, the claim is how much money out of E you want for yourself. So if I want, if my claim and your claim is, uh, I'm sorry, this is uh, what holds, why this is not interesting? Well, if my claim and your claim, I mean, the total claim is less than the amount of surplus, well, there's no problem really, right? Uh, let just everybody get their uh, a claim. Well, what are we gonna do with the remaining money? Oh, well, we can split it equally or whatever you wanna do it. Well, the thing is everybody's claims will be fulfilled, all right? But the interesting part is that this problem is becoming interesting. If we cannot fulfill everybody's claim, well then, um, well, we have to uh, try to be, for example, fair, equitable, or whatever your concern is. And so the question is going to be, how should we split this money 
the surplus among those n individuals so that it is fair, equitable, you know, whatever other concerns you have. All right. Again, so this is not an interesting case. And so therefore we're going to be looking at cases where the total or the sum the, of the claims is greater than or equal to the uh, endowment or the uh, surplus E. Well, we are going to use this notation. Uh, this is a capital C to the power N. It's just a notation. It basically denotes the set of all claims problem you can think of, all right? Uh, I mean, with N agents, more than N agents, less than N agents, depending on, right, as you change E, obviously you're gonna get another claims problem. As you change the C vector, the claim vector, you're gonna get another uh, claims problem. So. You can create infinitely many claims problem by changing again the set of agents and the uh, claim vector and obviously the surplus. So uh, all those claims problems are included in this set, okay? Um, well, okay, so when we, um, sorry, I'm gonna take uh, back uh, one things is like when we use this c to the power n, I'm sorry, we do not change the set of agents, the number of agents, we keep it the same, all right? So we do not vary the, the, the number of agents. So for that reason, we have to the power n. Okay, sorry. But everything else, meaning the uh, change the claim vector, change the uh, surplus, you create a new uh, uh, claims problem, and then it's, it's gonna be included in this set. All right, so, um, well, again, we are using a cooperative approach. So instead of modeling how these guys negotiate or sort of play some game between each other, I don't know, we don't know. We just take it as a black box. What we do, we just say, uh, let's create a, a, a rule, all right, which tells us how to split the uh, surplus E among N individuals by just looking at the E, the surplus, and the claim uh, vector, all right? So it's just a rule, sort of exogenous rule that we can pick and use at any problem we like. So similar to the bargaining problem, and in fact, um, we can uh, solve this problem as a bargaining problem. I mean, we can map every claim problem to some bargaining problem, all right? Uh, but the thing is, we prefer to analyze them separately than the bargaining problem, because remember in the bargaining problems, we did have uh, disagreement points. So here in the claims problem, uh, we don't have a disagreement point uh, exogenously given, right? I mean, if these two guys uh, uh, whose business bankrupt, uh, if they cannot make an agreement, what is gonna be their uh, disagreement point. Well, obviously you can say the disagreement point would be, you know, whatever the judge is going to decide if they go to court or if they can't negotiate out and, and, and figure out some division. Well, fine. Uh, but as I said, uh, in the, another difference is the claim vector. So here the agents do have claim, all right? And so the bargaining problems do not really uh, take claims into consideration. There's no such thing. You see what I mean? So once again, we can map each claims problem to some cooperative bargaining problem, uh, but we are going to analyze them as a separate entity because they are nevertheless intrinsically different than bargaining problems, thanks to the uh, claim um, uh, part of the uh, claims problem. So. The decision rule, we're gonna denote them with R, all right? I hope it doesn't confuse you with the set of reals and the R. So R is a rule, all right? For that reason, it's R. It basically maps each the claim problem into a vector of n dimension, a non-negative vector of n dimension. We're gonna denote this vector sometimes RCE, sometimes X. But don't forget this is a vector, all right? Meaning, uh, and, and we call this X as, as the awards vector or RCE as the awards vector. It basically tells us how much agent one, agent two, all the way up to agent N gets um, after this rule. Well, here, it's not just a random function. 
uh, it needs to satisfy two or well one inequality what is that well for a division rule has to be uh, a number giving us a vector between 0 and c so what does that mean that means for each individual for each agent his award should be non-negative all right i mean you cannot say uh Mr. X, you have to pay Mr. Y this much money. So Mr. X ends up with a negative surplus. This is not allowed, okay? So everybody should get at least zero surplus. The second thing uh, is that nobody should get more than his or her claim. All right, so don't forget this inequality implies that RI CE, so this is the ith individual award, is going to be greater than or equal to zero and also less than or equal to CI, all right, his own claim. So nobody gets more than his claim. Well, why is that so? Well, I mean, don't, don't, don't forget the total claim is already bigger than the surplus. And if you, if you allow some rule, uh, distribute this money to some agents getting more than their claim, but some other agents obviously can't get uh, up to their claim. Well, that's, that's awkward. That's weird, right? I mean, you shouldn't give some agents more than what he wants. Uh, just give him at most what he wants. And trust me, that's not going to be enough. So obviously you will, you will give agents less than what they want anyway. All right. So therefore, uh, this is the uh, sort of the uh, assumption we impose on division rules, all right? Well, obviously there might be infinitely many division rules. Some are very interesting, some are not. Um, and so we are going to talk about some rules, all right, in the next uh, few episodes. But before that, I would like to talk about some nice properties that, you know, some of those rules should satisfy. And then we're going to talk about some specific rules and see if they satisfy those properties or not. Okay.